I'm going to take you step by step to show you how you can make your very own electronic tester. The Octo Tester. Okay, follow along with me. Alright, so what you'll need is an extraction fan, a soldering iron, some solder, I've got some leaded solder here, some trusty snips and some trusty long nose pliers, and then we can begin. We have decided to include this schematic. If you wanted to build this circuit yourself, you can follow the schematic. Of course, our kit includes everything you need, along with the PCB and all of the components needed to create the circuit board. Feel free to use both of these resources to make a circuit yourself, but bear in mind that our kit will save you a lot of headache and time. Firstly, grab the microcontroller, which is the STM32. It is already programmed with the latest OctoTester release. In the pack, you will also have a OctoTester circuit board, and we need to cut out seven pins to match the connector. So it's as simple as counting seven pins and just snipping the pins off there. And we will need two rows of seven pins. So this bit is actually quite important. We're gonna place this as shown here in my drawing. We're gonna place the pins starting from the AC3 and GND pin spanning to the A7 and the C4 pin as indicated in the drawing here. What I do is I solder one of the pins so, so that they stay put and go ahead and solder the rest. Here I'm going to use the Octo Tester circuit board to help me align the pins as I want them. And I'm going to solder this on. So moving on, it's time to solder up the circuit board. So first of all, I'm going to start with the resistors. And here is a circuit diagram of our circuit and we'll be starting with the 4R7 resistor. R2 is 100 ohms and then R3 and 4 are 2.2k ohm resistors. The resistance values are indicated on the resistors color bands. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solder these into the relevant positions. Resistor 4R7 goes into resistor 1 slot. Then I want to grab a 100 ohm resistor. I want to solder that into the into the R2 position. I also use the long nose pliers to position the resistors in carefully. Then I'm going to grab two K ohm resistors and solder them into R3 and R4. Please pardon the shoddy soldering skills on display here. It's especially hard to solder whilst trying to record a video. Also, I'm not the best. So this is more of a representation of how a beginner would solder. Looking at the drawing here, we need some bat. 85s as D3 and D4, here D1, D2 and D3. We need the other type of diode which is the 3 volt diode. Placing these diodes in, make sure that the polarity is correct. So just match up the black stripe with the black white stripe on the circuit board. Essential otherwise the circuit will not work. And then I'm going to grab three of my 3.3 volt diodes and insert them into D1, D2 and D3. And next I'm going to grab the IC, you should see a half circle and a dot. Make sure that both semicircle on the IC and on the circuit boards are matching in orientation. It was going to lead to damage of the IC and okay, I'm going to solder the IC. Next 
that we're going to solder the header pins. But before you do, I actually, I actually realised in the post edit that it's better to do this once you've soldered the circuit board onto the micro. So I recommend omitting this for now and coming back to it once the and coming back to it once the once the circuit is soldered onto the microcontroller. Anyway, cut yourself eight legs of the header pin and this will be for the insertion of the display. Last little bits for the circuit board. Grab yourself two wires. We found that single core wire works the best. But in this case, I just used two jumper wires, making sure that the header pin is still intact. We found that if you strip the wire on these jumpers, the copper gets really brittle and it's not really suited for purpose. We found that the copper snaps off the board. After this, we will solder the circuit board onto the microcontroller. The best way to do this is to cut yourself two extra yellow pins and place them on each end of the circuit board. Uh, which I haven't done in the video but this ensures that when you solder the circuit board on it's on nice and even evenly one mistake I had done in the past is I actually soldered the circuit board on too close to the reset button which meant that the reset button was always engaged so the program could never start as you guys as you guys can see this is a bit of a messy process so this is why I recommend to solder the header pins on last because you have easier access to the pins you are soldering if you don't solder the header pins on. Because it was so hard to solder some of the pins, some of the pins got joined together so I just used this solder sucker just to remove the joint pins. And here it is, here's the final effect. So we've got the circuit board and the microcontroller. There is also an SDL file included for the case. It's made to be complementary to the microcontroller board and so it slots right in. Then take your two banana sockets and make sure to place these inside the case before you do any soldering, otherwise they'll be left loose and on the outside. I've done that before, trust me, don't you don't want to be there. And you can solder the two wires in and the polarity doesn't matter, you can solder it any way you want. You will also get a display. This is a 2.4 inch display and it works perfectly with a program in the microcontroller. We've also made a top lid for this. Again, this is available in the description below. The SDL file is open to everyone. Again, this clicks in nicely. So I've soldered the wires in for the plugs and this case is made to be a push fit. The pins on the the pins on the display should match the header pins on the circuit board. And booting it up with any luck, it boots up straight away. And there you have it guys. That is an octo tester completed by yourself. It's your own personalized octo tester and you can test electronics quickly and efficiently. If you followed along to this point and you don't have an octo tester, there's no reason why you shouldn't go to octotester.com and pick up yourself an octo tester. Trust me, it's gonna save you a lot of time fault finding. This thing is really nippy and really responsive. Thank you guys, I'll see you in the next one.